Welcome back. So one of the most exciting spaces for me in Web3 is the ability for us to build on the blockchain. That means we can build applications that utilize this technology in new ways uh, that brings again some of the benefits of decentralization that we haven't seen before in web applications. And those are called dApps. So what are dApps? Well, dApps stand for decentralized applications. And again, we won't leave you here with just the title. But let's say dig deep to what this actually means. And if we can t compare that to centralized applications, let's look at the differences. So in a centralized application, the front end is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and in decentralized applications, it's much the same. Uh, so again, if you have those, those skills, it's nice that they apply over. Uh, there are very specific JavaScript libraries that work with blockchain that we'll discuss later on, things like Web3.js to make communications with the blockchain much easier. On the back end, instead of working with a database that's probably hosted or centralized somewhere, uh, we can use the back end of the blockchain. So we can store data on a blockchain, we can read data, we can find things like transactions or user authentication, basically the user's wallet address, all on chain, as we call it. And we even have things like oracles where we can get information and data uh, from or sent to on the blockchain and sent to our applications as well. So again, all of that happens in a decentralized way on a blockchain rather than using a backend database. On the server side of things, again, serving the applications, instead of having a centralized service like a AWS, for example, uh, where we will be paying a company directly to host on them, we can use network nodes essentially to deploy things like our smart contracts uh, that get communicated to within our applications. And that will allow us to utilize the decentralized benefits of a blockchain right within our applications. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of a de working in this decentralized manner. So one of the advantages is that it's censorship resistant. Again, for your users, it's not that they can be banned or removed from working with your application and a service uh, like AWS or Google cannot pull your application based on certain requirements that they have. The data that you're working with is permanent. So as soon as the data that is committed to the blockchain is there, it's there forever. And even if you want to rebuild an application or someone else wanted to build a similar application, they have access to that data because all of it exists on the blockchain. It's payment native. So that's another thing that I don't think people uh, speak too much about. But if you've ever worked in an e-commerce environment, integrating payments can be tricky sometimes. It gets simpler as the time has gone by. But as we're working directly with a decentralized application on the blockchain, we already have a payment pla platform built in, which is working with crypto and tokens. And it's open source. Everyone loves open source, hopefully, where the benefits of being able to communicate with the community as well as improving the application is all there uh, within the arm's reach of any developer. What are the disadvantages? Well, at the moment at least, there's been a big wave of sort of poor usability for applications. This is largely because Web3 is quite new and we don't know necessarily how customers or uh, other users will want to work. There's been a vast minimum of improvements, but as you can imagine, things like the early internet were also easy to use. So we'll probably see time as time progresses, more user-friendly applications. They are open to attack, much like any other application. Again, when the source code as well as the contract code is readily and publicly available, hackers will take advantage of that situation and understand what your applications are looking at. Scalability. As we discussed last time, scalability is a tricky thing for not only for a blockchain to perform, but applications that exist on a blockchain. So how can uh, applications become more scalable, meaning being able to be deliver results and data faster for the users to expect. And the compute cost. Again, depending on the network that you deploy on, providing operations, even performing transactions, has a cost or transaction fee to them. How do we keep those things lower 
and again with your applications how does it apply to your specific use case uh, that users can easily use your application and not necessarily lose tons of funds so let's look at the node providers so again the only way to sort of deploy your application or smart contract to a blockchain is through participating in the network via a node and while anyone can participate in, and build a node or program a node to participate in the blockchain, those costs can be quite high. So there's actually been a new layer developed recently where node providers are being able to provide that service. So companies like QuickNode, Infura, and Alchemy all do these, provide these sorts of services where developers can start projects, build applications, and employ their smart contracts directly onto the blockchain via their service and then allow a front end to communicate with that contract. On the user authentication flow, this is also different to centralized applications. So you probably have logged on to something in the past where you can either you know, connect with your Google account, your Facebook account, maybe Apple account, again, using your credentials and already making an easier authentication process. But these are all still tied to sort of a centralized service where in the world of Earth 3 and decentralized applications, you can actually directly connect your wallet to your identifiable address on the blockchain so that you can identify yourself and as well as different assets that you have within your wallet that might trigger things within the application or give you access to the application entirely. And this is what the general tech stack looks like within Web3. So we have the layer one, the blockchains. Maybe we also participate in using layer two or side chains Again, these are chains that provide things like scalability and speed that won't necessarily be delivered on the layer one blockchains. We have different development environments that provide things like testing and local blockchains like Hardhat and Truffle. You can even also do things like file storage, very similar to a centralized database where we can point to different locations on a shared or P2P network but also have those locations stored on the blockchain. And this is what things like IPFS and Filecoin do. We can index and query the blockchain in an easier fashion using GraphQL by using the service the graph. And we can get data from outside the blockchain using oracles from things like chain, services like Chainlinks. And then the, the identity uh, of identifying our users without having to use any sort of personal identification information that we might have done in Web2 by connecting their wallets and build clients uh, that are easier for development side of things with using libraries like Web3.js and Ether.js. So that's how you build dApps. So let's see in the next one where we talk about how we can actually, the different types of tokens that we will be working with in our applications.